The next talk is by Manuel. It's planting basil in, ba in barren soil, a pearl story. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Manuel. I work at Booking and I'm here to talk about how we actually replatform part of our uh, Pearl legacy monorepo and how Basil actually helped us achieving that. Um, so a bit of history about that so you can actually understand how we got there. Uh, so we are one of the largest uh, travel agencies, online travel agency OTAs. Uh, we were founded in 96. We started with very large monoliths in our single repo. Then we realized we needed more applications. So what we did is just, oh, if you're writing on this service, we're going to just make a decision. And we just took the entire code base on every single repository, sorry, on every single ser uh, server. Uh, in 2017, we started adopting Kubernetes. And by then, well, deploying an entire code base of four, four gigabytes didn't scale anymore. Getting like 50, 60 dependencies for each one of them didn't scale anymore. And then realized, well, we need to do something. Uh, and a bit about like how is Perl at Booking. So as I said, our code base is a bit messy. It uh, used to be messier than what it is right now. We have around 10 million lines of Perl code. Uh, we didn't used to have dependency management back then. Like literally, you could get anything everywhere. Uh, you we will just put the, everything on a very gigantic Docker image, and we will just ship it over. Uh, our first commit goes back all the way to 2002. And if you're wondering what happened between 96 and 2002, we actually rewrite the entire code base. Uh, in 2017, we started adopting GitLab. So this actually enabled us to start doing CI for real and to get ownership. Like we could actually, from this day, we would actually start getting code ownership. We used to have something based on Jenkins, but it didn't work that well. Uh, it was something that you will run it on demand, kind of. So you can imagine how it went. Uh, and then in 2020, we finally enabled merge requests and make that mandatory. Like until that day, you like it was very common that you will pull the repo and push until you don't get any conflicts and it goes through. Yeah, it was like that's what it happened. So this was the face of our developers on the first day at work. So you land on the repository or you land on the repo, you open there is this lib directory that has something like 40, 48,000 uh, files inside with no clear structure. And uh, there was an Italian around in the area at that time, and then he came up with the concept of Project Ravioli. So uh, if you like, we tend to speak of uh, messy code based as spaghetti code. Well, Ravioli is still pasta. Like, I get it, it's pasta. It's still the same thing. Uh, you may be lucky and you may be able to tell the sauce apart from the, from the spaghetti, but it looks better than the spaghetti. Uh, it's a smaller chunks. Uh, you no longer get the entire code base. You can actually get your own ravioli, and you don't get all the rest. And we actually call these distributions. Uh, and this actually allows our developers to start looking, hey, if I bring this thing, all of these other things comes with it. Uh, it allows us to be testable. Like before this, it's like, well, I'm going to run this test if this file changes. <laughs> but now it's like, as we know, like we are actually doing Basel. So like we not only want to test when that file changes, we also want to test when the entire the uh, transit dependency tree changes. But, or or this is a plus, I don't know. Um, it requires, like a build system, it requires an orchestrator. Perl by itself doesn't need a build system. It's literally, it's on a build when you start it. It doesn't need to build up, uh, before. But when you're starting to put Docker images, when you're starting, like you need external dependencies, when you start to put all of these things together, then you need a build system. Also, I forgot to mention, we have JavaScript on the repository as well, and we have to build the assets. So that was another plus for the build system. So let's have a Basel, like, fine. Uh, yeah, well, it's not that easy, but we actually managed to do it. Uh, we, and we also have to do it without major disruptions. Uh, we started Project Ravioli on Q2 of 2019. We started that in Basel on Q1 2020. And we did a big bang migration on uh, Q1 2021. That's when I actually joined the team for real. That's when we move from that gigantic lib directory to something like 6,000 distributions. Uh, and it, it came with challenges. We knew Perl way better than what we knew Basil back then. As different from other companies, we didn't start it with some Googlers joining us. We really liked the way Google was doing stuff, so we were reading the books. Like, we knew about Blaze, and as soon as Basil became open source, we went with it. There, I don't know. Okay, this is a part of it. I don't know. It wasn't part of the team back then. I don't think there were Perl rules available back then. Now there's some on GitHub. They are not as good as us, uh, as ours, sorry. 
uh, but our initial implementation had way too many siblings. So a very small hello world will have something like 20 to 40,000 siblings. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, and we started using Basel DNF uh, because we are using CentOS for most of our stuff. And Basel DNF allow us to reuse the RPMs that were built before. Uh, we, this is something that our developers struggles a lot. It's legal or, well, I don't know if the word is legal, but this, it, you can on Perl get secret dependencies and those are totally valid. Well, Basel for good reasons doesn't allow you to do that. We have like a, for a transition period, we are allowing people to do uh, secret dependencies at the runtime, uh, but yeah, we're still, we still gonna get there. And you need tooling to manage your Basel files. And because I don't remember the exact details, whether it was because Gazelle plugins were not available back then, or just because we knew Perl way better than that, we actually wrote our own Starlight parser in Perl, so in Perl uh, that is aware of uh, all the Perl dependencies to the point where actually our developers don't have to care about the build of Basel files. They make a change, they push to the CI, on CI we verify that are not in any circular dependencies, and we're done. We just have some CI that actually push the build Basel changes after. Maybe one day we'll have a cell. Uh, we'll see. Uh, well, GitLab runner support. This is, and we have heard this all the day along. Um, most of the CI solutions are not well uh, set for Basel. They're just not friendly enough. They all just start from clean stuff. And unfortunately, there's no open source solution for this. So we actually make our own uh, bare metal based monster for GitLab that where we have Docker uh, in there. Uh, I'm not gonna get there. Um, and remote caching and BES and the village event service are critical. We started with JFrog as our, our remote caching support, uh, tooling. Uh, after BaselCon last year, we started testing other things. I sure we actually have a setup where we are using the open source build body for BES and, uh, and remote caching. We're using BuildBarn for RBE. Uh, we are still looking for vendors. There are some uh, things inside the company where I cannot get it, but it's not part of this discussion. Um, and RB is trivial. Well, sorry, is th that's the typo that I have on the slide. RB is not trivial at all, especially if you own your own rules. Uh, we haven't finished adopting uh, RB yet. We are doing something similar to what Python does with egg files, where we're well, just going to create the Tarshi C for each one of our libraries. And it turns out it's way more efficient to ship maybe 2,000 Tarshi Cs of like 100 kilobytes and push in 40,000 files. Uh, and it worked, but we have a merge branch. Uh, so some of our results. The first of all, as I said, mentioned before, 100% coverage that all our build based files are auto managed, and this actually made our developers' experience easier, better in the sense they don't have to care about this. 55% of our services are already on Basel, so those, so in total, we have something like 350 services, uh, out of which 11% were created over the last 12 months. So like. At least to me, I'm going to be humble. I think we succeeded. Uh, this is the one, the most impressive, impressive one. So from the 2.2 gigabyte image we had in Docker where we shipped the entire code base, we can get the Hello World for under 500 megabytes. And this is because we are still shipping an entire CentOS 7 uh, that has RPM support and all of that. I'm actually working on doing this with Basel DNF. Uh, we increase our CI usage. So we were running 100 shops on uh, 2020, now we're running 1.6 million per month. Uh, our 19%, oh, sorry, our 50%, that was not our 90, went down from 22 minutes to two minutes. So actually our developers are way happy, like they push a, a branch to our repo and they get the results in less than five minutes. Our test coverage is started increasing, like turns out that if you allow your developers to write tests, you actually write a test. <laughs> and they actually implemented 12.5% over the last 12 months, which is impressive. And uh, yeah, Basel was a crucial part for this entire trip. Um, I think we can say our customers are happy. Like it's always like the detractors are way louder than the adopters, and we're not getting much detractors. So I think people are happy. I don't know. Uh, native caching features and native remote execution and instrumentation of your build systems are the things that you really need to get out. Uh, so Basel was the right fit for this. And I'm pretty, I'm very, very happy that no one wanted to do the stupid decision of implementing a build system in Perl just for the sake of implementing a build system. And thank you.